You're listening to the Spark Radio Network, Internet radio like you've never heard before. Innovation, creativity, and imagination are all said to begin with a spark. So fasten your seatbelt and take the ride of your life and listen for the spark. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Most writers and radio show hosts know that to connect with your fans, you need to do more than just write books or record the latest podcasts. There are many different elements that go into forming an online platform, but there are also many hidden traps. To make matters worse, solid advice on how to survive the muddy waters is scarce. In the book Hidden Traps, I talk about some of the important issues of working with an online platform, highlighting traps that could put your physical or internet security at risk or be harmful to your reputation. Are your social media posts just links with a few disjointed words making you look like someone who can't complete a sentence? Did your new website cost you more than you anticipated? Are you leaking your personal contact details across the web without even knowing it? Then you need Hidden Traps. Hidden Traps is now available in paperback and ebook from a variety of retailers, including Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and Kobo. Visit blackwolfpublications.com for more details. If you're 85 or younger, would you like peace of mind and comfort for your family? We're Final Expense Direct with an urgent message for you. The average funeral today costs over $8,000, but the most you'll get from government benefits is $255. How will your family pay the difference? We can help. Our senior plans start as low as just a dollar a day and pay up to $30,000 for a funeral and other final expenses. Peace of mind is easy. There's no medical exam. You'll have lifetime coverage, and your plan can't be canceled as long as you pay your premiums. Call now for free information about our senior plans. Answer a few simple questions and receive approval right on the phone. Plus, call right now and we'll give you a discount prescription card for free. Call 800-553-8687. That's 800-553-8687. Again, 800-553-8687. KLRN Radio has advertising rates available. We have rates to fit almost any budget. Contact us at advertising at klrnradio.com. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810. My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq, Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible. Affordable. Relevant. Call 800-910-1370. Sometimes riders feel lost, unsure why a passage may not be working. 
takes another set of eyes to help us nurture our writing into full maturity. At Black Wolf Editorial Services, we strive to enable writers to develop and grow, offering manuscript critiques and line edits through a mentoring editorial style. We also offer assistance on generating a writer's bio for your websites. Black Wolf Editorial Services, nurturing your writing into maturity. For a full list of services, visit blackwolfeditorial.com. This is Rio of Madison Rising, and you're listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. It's time now for the Conservative Curmudgeon Radio Show. Now, here's Grouchy. Thank you. It is so good to be back with you. Ah, let's uh, get Seymour cleaned up here real quick. Yeah, we brought him back. We got, you know, we have no guests this week, so Seymour was allowed back in the studio. <clears throat> Always good to have Seymour in here. He knows how to hold up a pane of glass. Uh, real quick, programming reminder, coming up following my show tonight, Jesse's POV, uh, followed by the potluck blank spot still in the menu as far as I know, and then uh, the the nightcap with America off the rails with Rowdy Rick Robinson. So uh, let's see, real quick, around the horn with news we're not going to spend much time on. Uh, Speaker Paul Ryan has decided that he will not run for office again when his term expires uh, in January. Uh, so in this November election, he will not be running for office again. Uh, and this just in from Wisconsin, Paul Nealon is still polling 70 points behind in the Republican primary. So there you go with that. Uh Let's see, what else is going on? Uh, Trump's lawyers, office, uh, home, properties, uh, other work site uh, raided by Mueller's, uh, Mueller or Mueller or whatever the hell his name is. Uh, his uh, special counsel team, uh, they, of course, they've, you know, it, wasn't, it wasn't really him, but, you know, they turned it over to the Southern District of New York and they issued the warrant and blah, 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 and, you know, whatever. Um, so... You know, to get the warrant, there has to be something there. Um, otherwise, this judge is not going to issue the warrant. So it's just a matter of time before we find out exactly what it was. Uh, there's a lot of speculation, but that's all it is right now is speculation. Uh, let's see what else is going on. Oh, yeah. Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg has spent the last two days on Capitol Hill testifying, um, basically doing the Hillary shuffle, saying, I take responsibility, but it's everybody else's fault. So anyway, um, you know, we know what's going on with the data leak at Facebook, and, you know, you can find out if you were affected. Uh, I hope that you took measures to where you were not. But, you know, who knows? Who actually really knows? Um, certainly not Zuckerberg. Uh, you know, and he also, I know what this hearing was about, but um, there were a couple of people that uh, took it upon themselves to expound upon uh, the censorship of Facebook and uh, brought that topic to a head. And hopefully that makes some inroads, uh, you know, over on Facebook. But I won't be going back, so that just is what it is. Um, let's see. What else? What else? Uh, here we go. Yeah. Hey, Governor Jerry Brown in California has now agreed to send National Guard troops to the border at President Trump's request. How about that? So uh, I guess this means that uh, Oregon's governor is the only one that's uh, really resisting verbally and, and, and thinking that she can just deny this. So 
We'll see what happens with Oregon. It may be that we don't need their troops. Uh, they may be too busy learning how to pump their own gas. Who knows? That's the All real right. reason what they're not sending going? the National Guard down. They have them stationed at the pumps to help people. That's well, safe. there you go. <laughs> there you go. I like it. Why not? I saw that uh, when Oregon actually passed that law to allow uh, their citizens in quote unquote rural areas to the option to pump their own gas, uh, that they actually had a National Guardsman who is a motor pool individual in the National Guard say that pumping gas requires a trained professional. Yeah, he really did. On vehicles, he says that it takes professional. So anyway, uh, what we've got, what else? What else? Uh, Brenna Spencer, the uh, Tennessee college student, uh, who took the uh, infamous raised shirt showing off her pistol in her waistband picture, uh, was invited on Fox News to defend her photo with the gun. Uh, I say that this is a very sad microcosm of what is wrong with America, that she even has to defend the picture to begin with. If she wants to take a picture with her gun in her waistband, who the hell is anybody to tell her otherwise? You know, this is a 22-year-old young lady, graduating college, took a picture with her gun. So what? And people are losing their minds over it. I just don't get it. People need to worry about themselves a whole lot more and others a whole lot less. And what else is happening out there? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, this little thing uh, happened. Uh, our president, I know this is going to shock you, he actually took to Twitter uh, to tell Syria and Russia that uh, the smart bombs were coming. <clears throat> Pardon me. So, yeah, he, uh, he, he took to Twitter to tell them that the smart bombs Smart bombs were coming, and this is the same guy who uh, campaigned on not telling the enemy when and where we were coming. So, you know, I say, what the hell, Mr. President? What the hell? I mean, I get it, okay? I mean, Assad, Assad needs to have his butt kicked. He needs... He needs more than to have his butt kicked. He needs to be taken out, okay? But we need to have a serious plan, a plan of attack, and a plan of aftermath, and an exit plan. We need to have it all lined out. We need to have it ready to go if we're going to do this. And uh, there's, there's no excuse we cannot afford to end up 16 years again on top of where we've been already in the Middle East with Syria. This needs to be swift, and it needs to be severe. So anyway, uh, a little questioning for Mr. President there. And uh, it is what it is. So now we'll move on to the uh, scripted part of the program. If you give me just a quick second here. There we go. All right. So uh, first up, first up, we have House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi, Democrat of California. She, uh, she said that the jobs report for March, which was a, a it wasn't a great jobs report. Um, there's still some things that need to be unkinked. But uh, she says that the jobs report, which showed unemployment holding at 4.1%, indicates that the wealthiest 1% continue to hoard the benefits of the United States economy. <clears throat> now, 
She went on to say that Democrats will never stop fighting for the hardworking middle class families who are the backbone of our nation. Now, she says this, okay, you have to take this with a grain of salt because Nancy Pelosi herself is worth $29.5 million. Yeah. Yeah, how do you go to D.C. and make a $176,000 salary and end up worth $29.5 million? So anyway, um, like I said, take her words about income equality with a grain of salt. <clears throat> Now, here's her statement in full. I don't have the audio, so bear with me. Uh, my voice is going crazy again. I've got pollen all over the place down here on the Gulf Coast. Uh, so we'll do this as best we can. She said, March's disappointing jobs report shows that corporations and the wealthiest 1% continue to hoard the benefits of the U.S. economy. Powerful special interests are reaping massive windfalls from the GOP tax scam, while workers are denied the raises and good-paying jobs they deserve. <clears throat> now, here's, here's where the Democrats really veer off hard, okay, because they think you're entitled to a high-paying job. They think you're entitled to a job. And then that you're entitled to good pay, whether you actually do it or not. This is a big problem with the Democrat platform. So from the start, the White House and the Republicans in Congress, uh, she continued, uh, have put themselves first and their rich donors too. And the American people are last. Corporations are cheering their huge new tax breaks by enriching their executives and investors while hardworking men and women see little help and rising health costs. Well, I wonder who we got to thank for those health costs there, uh, Congresswoman. Who do you think is responsible for those rising health costs? Hmm. Could that be the Democrats and the Affordable Care Act? Now, I'm not going to lie, okay? I would like to see bigger tax cuts for the American people. I really would. But I noticed a nice difference in my paycheck, and I know lots of other people noticed a nice difference in their paycheck, too. A lot of places are seeing big bonuses. You got employers like Walmart and Target that are, you know, they're huge. They're nationwide. They're even bigger than nationwide. And they're raising their minimum wage. Target's going to 12 bucks an hour. 12 bucks an hour to work at Target. Pelosi continued to say that uh, Democrats are fighting to give the American people a better deal with better jobs, better wages, and a better future. Says they are committed to creating millions of new good-paying jobs and raising wages, lowering the soaring cost of living for families, and giving every American the tools to succeed in the 21st century economy. She said Democrats will never stop fighting for the hardworking middle class families who are the backbone of our nation. Now, listen, if you believe anything this woman says about income equality, you're crazy. OK, it's just plain and simple. Nancy Pelosi's a liar to begin with. OK, how do you think government creates jobs? Anybody? No. Well, they don't. Government doesn't create jobs. What government can do is to pass regulations or repeal regulations and repeal restrictive laws that make things better for businesses who create jobs. The government can create an environment that is good for businesses to create more jobs. The Democrats are not good at doing this. They overregulate everything. And then their answer is, 
Well, if you just take the money that your corporation makes and split it equally among every employee, no, 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 no. That's not how it works, Nancy. That is not how this works. That's not how any of this works. But that's, that's their plan. They think that it's okay to tell somebody how much money they can make and to put a cap on it like Canada does with their doctors. You know, I have, I have doctor friends who come down here and practice six months out of the year because they cap out on salary in Canada and they don't want to just sit around for six months and do nothing. So they come down here and they practice and they, they you know, it's half practice. They half practice and they half vacation because it's the Gulf of Mexico and it's gorgeous, especially this time of year. So, you know, that's that's where we're at with Pelosi and the Democrats and their ideas on, look, the first thing they would do when the Democrats seize power again, and they will seize power again, whether they get it this midterm or not, that's a whole other story. But there will come a time when the Democrats will have the White House, they'll have the House, and they'll have the Senate again. They had it the first two years of Obama's administration. Okay, we got lucky that they were so dumb they didn't know what to do with it. But I promise you they will not make that mistake again when they seize power again. And it will happen. The first thing they're going to do is they're going to raise our taxes. You can take that to the bank. That's their idea of a better future for us. Now, regarding taxpayer money, we're going to move on to another story here. Uh, So the Arizona Supreme Court laid a ruling out on Monday that says Arizona colleges can no longer give in-state tuition to young immigrants covered under the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, or DACA, program. The court issued a brief decision uh, order saying justices unanimously agreed uh, with the Arizona Court of Appeals ruling that said existing federal and state laws do not allow the Maricopa County Colleges to grant in-state tuition rates for DACA recipients. A full opinion further explaining the court's ruling will be released on May 14th, uh, so states the order. Now, the court released the order Monday to allow Maricopa Community Colleges or Community College students and the state to have as much time as possible to plan for those affected by the ruling. More than 2,000 DACA recipients, commonly referred to as DREAMers, currently attend community college or state university in Arizona and pay in-state tuition rates. The ruling will make DACA recipients pay much more to attend those schools, as the out-of-state rates are about triple the cost of in-state tuition. Now, let's just stop here for a minute and talk about this. The court is saying that they don't have a right to attend college at the rate of an in-state resident. Okay, I understand that under DACA, they, whether I like it or not, they have a legal status to be in the country, which means that they can attend public universities and community colleges. But as a non-citizen of the United States, as a non-citizen of the United States, anybody that's attending a public university, community college, whatever you want to call it, I don't care. If you are not a citizen or a legal resident of the United States, you should be paying out of pocket. There should be no loan program. There should be no grant program. We have enough people in this country that can't afford to send their kids to secondary schools for for furthering their education after high school. Uh, They should be the ones entitled to this, quote unquote, free money that we keep throwing around. Now, an example of in-state students at Arizona State University Uh, Arizona State in-state tuition is $9,834. 
okay? Non-residents at Arizona State University pay $27,618. As for the Maricopa Community College, uh, residents pay $86 per credit hour, and non-residents pay $241 per credit hour. It's freaking outrageous. Now, it says that DACA recipients may not have to pay the full non-resident rate. The Arizona Board of Regents approved a lower tuition, tuition rate in 2015 meant for non-residents who are Arizona high school graduates. Okay, you might sneak a few in here. Uh, the rate is 150% of the in-state tuition, which amounts to $14,751 uh, for the next year. Uh, Karina Iribe, a DACA recipient and the Director of Advocacy at Undocumented Students for Education Equity, uh, that'd be UZI, that's, that's a great acronym, UZI, because they're using our tax dollars, uh, said the ruling will mean fewer students at Arizona's universities and community college. Hey, you know what? I hate that, but so be it. So be it. <clears throat> Uh, quite frankly, I'm sick of taking care of people that don't belong in this country. Uh, you know, I feel bad that they have problems in their home country, but they need to go home and fix it. We are not the world's problem solvers. We do not have the money. We do not have the infrastructure. We do not have the resources. Now, Iribe said she finished her undergraduate degree in August, but was hoping to get a master's. I'll bet she was. Uh, the ruling could mean she's priced out of that option, she said. Unfortunately, today a decision was made to block access to education for deserving Arizona students. Uh, okay, this is how they play their game, okay? Deserving Arizona students is a euphemism for illegal alien. Deserving Arizona students have been in Arizona all their life and are, uh, you know, residents, are legal residents and have legal status, citizenship. Those are deserving Arizona students. Just because your parents snuck you here eight years ago doesn't mean you're a deserving Arizona student. Now, Karina Ruiz, the president of the Arizona Dream Act Coalition, said the group knew the ruling was a possibility, adding that it will be a massive burden for young immigrants who want a college education. Oh, you guess what? It's a massive burden for people in the state that want a college education, too. In-state tuition rates were already financially difficult because DACA recipients can't access federal or state financial aid, she said, making DACA recipients pay non-resident rates means a higher education is going to be almost impossible. Again, not our problem. They have a home country they can go to and get educated in. Beyond the DACA recipients, the state as a whole will be affected, she said. The students could be the next generation of attorneys or doctors. You mean just like the ones they're in school with, Will? Look, I get it. There are DACA recipients that graduate college and go on to do good things. There are, okay? There absolutely are. But they're the minority. They're the minority in the minority. OK, far more are expelled from the country or jailed for not doing a good thing or not contributing for being a taker, if you will. Now, the Arizona Dream Act Coalition will start raising money immediately to fund emergency scholarships for next semester, but they're calling it a, a state of crisis. Uh, Arizona Attorney General Mark Burnovich said he wasn't surprised to see the ruling because his office has maintained all along that colleges and universities were violating state and federal laws 
by granting in-state tuition to DACA recipients. He said, it's about time someone held them accountable, and that's my job. My role as attorney general is to make sure you're following the law, he said. He said he's sympathetic to DACA recipients' arguments because he is a first-generation American, but he said his job isn't to delve into policies, but to uphold the law as it's written. Thank God, somebody with some common freaking sense for a change. It's about time. Where's this guy? We need him in D.C., huh? He'd probably just get ruined there, so it doesn't matter. Um, Bernovich continued by saying, what makes this country unique and great is because the rule of law means something. Well, it, it guess it does where you are there, uh, Attorney General Bernovich, but not in D.C. because they fight against established laws there. They don't pass any to overturn it. They just fight against them. Now, Monday's ruling came quickly. Uh, the court heard oral arguments on the issue one week ago. The justices upheld a 2017 Arizona Court of Appeals ruling that said the state hasn't specifically granted in-state tuition to the Dreamer population, so the community colleges couldn't give them in-state rates. So now we're setting up something for Arizona's legislation, our legislature to uh, pass, and, and let's see how the people feel about that. The ruling also applied to the state's three public universities, which began charging in-state tuition after a 2015 Maricopa County uh, Superior Court decision said it was legal because DACA recipients had legal immigration status in the country. Community colleges and universities continued to charge the resident rates while the case was being considered by the higher court. Another wrinkle in the argument over lawful presence and how it affects in-state tuition for DACA recipients is Proposition 300, which was a 2006 ballot measure that requires people to have lawful immigration status to receive public benefits. So there you go. Just like the Attorney General said, this is a no-brainer. Absolutely a no-brainer. All right, folks, we're at the bottom of the hour. We're going to run a little commercial break. Uh, we should be good for about three or, I don't know, three and a half, something like that. Uh, this is your chance to get a drink. My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm. But even then, he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq. Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree, too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible. Affordable. Relevant. Call 800-910-1370. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. 
Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810. All right, welcome back. Uh, so, you know, um, I wanted to do this uh, story a few weeks ago when it actually happened. Uh, well, actually, like a month ago when it actually happened. But uh, this was a nice follow-up. We finally got the original story in. This is uh, I'm talking about when uh, President Trump visited Manchester Community College in New Hampshire uh, to address the opioid crisis uh, gripping our nation. Uh, This is when he called for drug traffickers to possibly face death penalty uh, in the cases of fatal opioid overdoses. Now, the the follow-up to this is that, you know, the president wants to go after this through supporting law enforcement and getting them more involved in it. Uh, Attorney General Jeff Sessions uh, has issued a statement supporting uh, President Trump's directive Uh, that the Justice Department will use federal law to seek the death penalty wherever appropriate. Uh, The president urged prosecutors to impose really powerful penalties for the bad pushers and abusers, referring to drug manufacturers and companies. Sessions announced a new DOJ task force last month to investigate opioid-related lawsuits involving deceptive marketing practices. Our Department of Justice is looking very seriously into bringing major litigation against some of these drug companies, uh, said President Trump, who in part uh, won the first in the nation primary because of a promise to tackle the epidemic, um, claimed that his administration was pouring a lot of money into the crisis. And, and they have. They've, uh, you know, in, this, in the latest omnibus spending bill, the, the bill that everybody loves to hate, um, there are six billion dollars that have been allocated for the opioid epidemic for 2018 and 2019. Now we don't have all the uh, defined parameters of how that money money is going to be spent yet, uh, but the president did address an oft-repeated request by state and local authorities by announcing that two drug manufacturers of the overdose reversal uh, naloxone. Uh, ADAPT Pharma and Kaleo will be distributing some free units to high schools and universities around the country. Uh, Naloxone manufacturers have drawn scrutiny for their exorbitantly high prices. When CBS News contacted uh, ADAPT Pharma in January, they said that they had not uh, heard anything from the White House uh, months after the president announced the opioid epidemic as a public health emergency. Uh, Before pulling Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar on stage, the president teased a major news conference next month about lowering the prices of prescription drugs in the United States. He said, we're rolling out a whole slate of other proposals about decreasing the prices of drugs. Uh, So the plan to combat this opioid crisis focuses on expanding treatment reducing overprescription, and that's heavy, heavy. This is where we really need to concentrate the effort, in the doctor's offices, okay? And in addition, there'll be a, a nationwide educational campaign. Uh, it'll be just say no again. I'm kidding. I don't know that, but, you know, whatever it is. It, look, we can joke here on the show. This is a serious, serious problem, 
and it affects people in a very real way and not just other people. Uh, you, you may not have anybody directly involved in your life, but I guarantee you, you know somebody that has uh, somebody in their life that's struggling with this or has struggled with it. So um, the president spoke most passionately about cutting off the supply of illicit drugs by building the wall along the southern border. This will help. Uh, in, in case you don't know, because of what's happened to the pot market in the United States, it's no longer really profitable for Mexico to grow it and import it into the United States. If you look at satellite imagery of where the marijuana fields used to be in Mexico, many of them are now growing poppies to make heroin. This is a for real thing. And that's what's coming across our southern border. Eventually, the president said, Democrats will agree with us and we'll build the wall to keep the damn drugs out. Ah, uh, you know, this is his way of trying to put pressure on them. That's not how you do it. But he's his man and he's going to do things his way. So all we can do is sit back and watch the show. He says they want to keep DACA for the campaign instead of getting it approved, which we could do very easy. Despite a senior administration official's insistence on Sunday night that the official event was purely non-political. There are a lot of voters in the room. I see that, quipped the president. The president also said that ending sanctuary cities is crucial to stopping the crisis. He then mentioned the death of Kate Steinle, a woman killed by an undocumented immigrant in San Francisco. Uh, her murder was not related to the opioid crisis, directly at least. Uh, the president sent a letter or spent a little over a minute uh, addressing the lack of access to treatment across the country by promising to change a restrictive 1970s law that prevents Medicaid from paying for care facilities that have more than 16 beds by providing waivers to states to help people who need treatment now. Look, it's a fact we can't save everybody, but we can try. And even if we can't save everybody, how many can we save? And is it worth it? Think about the families out there, families that grieve their loved ones. It's very real. All right, so moving on. A little bit of a sad story here. As a child, Muriel Knoll barely escaped the sweeping 1942 Nazi-inspired wartime roundup of 13,000 Jews in Paris, most of whom were sent to the notorious Auschwitz death camp. But just over two weeks ago on Friday, March 23rd, a week before Passover at the age of 85, Muriel was raped tortured, and murdered in her apartment in Trebe, small town in southwestern France, by a young Muslim man she had known since he was seven who shouted Allahu Akbar during his anti-Jewish bloodlust rampage. The disabled grandmother was stabbed 11 times and her body was burned, according to law enforcement, by two men, one of whom, Yassine Mehoub, the primary suspect was previously jailed for six months for sexually assaulting the daughter of a woman who helped look after the elderly Mrs. Knoll. The heinous anti-Semitic crime has blown the lid off what has become a pattern of such attacks in France in the last five years, in which some 250 murders have been committed by Muslims, according to Guy Meliere, a professor at the University of Paris and author of 27 books on France and Europe. Today, France is the only country in the Western world where Jews are murdered simply for being Jews. So he writes, uh, French Jews live in constant insecurity. The men who murder them evidently do not hesitate to break into homes and attack elderly women. 
They seem to know they can threaten their future victims without fear of arrest. More often than not, the police do not even record the complaints of Jews who go to the police station, but simply note in the day book that a Jew claiming threats came and went. While authorities in France were quick to point out the accused murderers had no apparent connection to any jihadist groups, Miller says French authorities never speak of the only anti-Semitism that today in France kills Jews. Islamic anti-Semitism. If the murderer is a Muslim, he is usually described as suddenly radicalized. The word radicalized is now used to describe Muslim killers. It allows those who use it to avoid the words Muslim or Islam. Almost exactly a year ago, on April 4th, 2017, Sarah Halimi, another elderly Jewish woman, was tortured and murdered in her home in Paris and thrown from her window by a man shouting Allahu Akbar. She had reported to the police several times she was the victim of anti-Semitic threats. For months, the French justice system tried to cover up the anti-Semitic nature of Sarah Halimi's murder. There was almost no news coverage of the murder of Sarah Halimi when it took place. Uh, there was more on the murder of Muriel Noel, but almost none referred to the cause of her murder. The fear that neutralizes French politicians and journalists is being accused of Islamophobia. Then there was 23-year-old Ilan Halimi, who was abducted and held for three weeks in January and February, all the way back in 2006, while being tortured by his kidnappers before dying of the physical abuse that he had sustained. The ringleader of the self-proclaimed gang of barbarians, 25-year-old Yusuf Fufana, said that Halimi, who was an employee in a mobile phone shop in the same part of Paris where Muriel Noel lived, was kidnapped for ransom because Jews, quote, have money. Yay. Isn't that nice? There was an attack at the uh, Ozar HaTorah school in Toulouse, in 2012, when three children and a rabbi were shot dead point blank by the jihadist Mohammed Marah, who had killed three French soldiers, two of whom were Muslim, over the previous week. Well, this guy's a real charmer, isn't he? In January of 2015, four people were killed in the attack on the kosher supermarket in uh, Vincennes, a suburb bordering Paris. In the last 20 years, more than 20% of French Jews have left the country, according to polls. 40% of Jews still living in France want to leave. In the last couple of years, there have been hundreds of French Jews moving to New York City, said Steve Eisenberg, co-founder of the Jewish International Connection of New York, a Manhattan group that helps uh, international Jews acclimate to the city. They're here because they just can't breathe as Jews in France. There's no Jewish future there. You can't walk in Paris wearing a yarmulke. You're taking your life into your hands. The harassment and violence more often fall short of murder. In January, an eight-year-old outside his Jewish day school in Sarce was beaten to the ground and a 15-year-old girl wearing a Jewish school uniform was slashed across the face by an unknown man. Uh, on January 9th, an arson fire roared through two kosher Paris markets weeks after swastikas were painted on both stores. The attack took place on the third anniversary of the kosher supermarket massacre in which four Jewish customers were murdered during a hostage situation. That one we all knew. Over the past decade in France, anti-Semitic hate crimes have reportedly averaged roughly 566 per year. There are about 500,000 Jews left in France, representing the second largest population outside of Israel after the United States. Uh, Manuel Valls, whose wife is Jewish and who served as France's prime minister between March 2014 and December 2016, has acknowledged the connection between growing anti-Semitism 
and, and the uh, insular Arab Muslim communities. Uh, first of all, we must not deny the facts, he said. We must tell the truth. Anti-Semitism does exist, and it's very important to make the correct diagnosis. We have to recognize that even if our government's actions helped to lower the anti-Semitism in recent years, very violent acts against French Jews have increased. One should not be afraid to say that anti-Semitism is the fruit, first of all, of the behavior of Arab Muslims, young and old. One has to name the sources, and justice has to be extremely harsh. So, I mean, this is a lesson that we could have uh, used with our previous administration. You know, they, they refused to admit what was radicalized Islam and what wasn't. Uh, meanwhile, Mrs. Knoll's son, Daniel, had this to say in the wake of his mother's murder. Uh, my mother accepted everyone, even the neighbor who murdered her. She has known since he was seven years old. When he was a boy, he helped her. At first, we weren't sure the murder was due to anti-Semitism. We waited for police to say it, and now we know the truth. Until now, I haven't felt anti-Semitism in France. Of course, there were dangerous Muslim extremists, but until today, I didn't feel in danger. I work with people from all walks of French society. Many are afraid of Muslim extremists, but I didn't feel that until now. Even today, I'm not afraid. How is he not afraid if he feels it now? I don't know. Okay. I mean, there are some who are uneducated idiots, but they exist everywhere in the world. So, anyway... Uh, Noah Goldfarb, Noel's, grand, Noel's granddaughter, who lives in the seaside Israeli town of Herzliya, added, Grandma didn't believe in evil. That may be the reason she's no longer with us. What a sad commentary. So sad. So now uh, we're going we're gonna to hit the last story here. We're going to close out on a bit of a positive note. Uh, we have scientists claiming an important breakthrough in the battle against Alzheimer's. Uh, they have neutralized the most significant gene responsible for the disease for the first time in a human brain. A team in California successfully identified the protein associated with the high-risk APOE4 gene and then managed to prevent it from damaging human neuron cells. It's pretty freaking amazing. The study could open the door to a potential new drug capable of halting the disease. However, the researchers have urged caution because so far their compound has only been tried on collections of cells in a laboratory. Having one copy of the APOE4 gene more than doubles a person's likelihood of developing Alzheimer's disease, whereas having two copies increased the risk 12-fold. Previous studies have indicated that roughly one in four people carry the gene. In human neurons, misshapen APOE4 protein cannot function properly and is broken down into disease-causing fragments in the cells. This results in several of the problems commonly found in Alzheimer's patients, which affects 7.1% of Britons above the age of 65 including the accumulation of protein tau and amyloid peptides. Uh, this is from the team at Gladstone's Institute that set out to establish whether the presence of the protein was causing the damage or whether a lack of it was to blame. Now, folks, I can go ahead and tell you that that number uh, transfers pretty soundly uh, to the American population as well as the British population, uh, somewhere around 7 to 9%. So using stem cell technology, they created neurons from skin cells donated by Alzheimer's patients with two copies of the APOE4 gene. This is one of the coolest things. I wish you could see the picture on the radio, and I've blown through this so quick, but okay, we got more here. We're fine. Uh, by comparing the cells, we'll go a little deeper with this, uh, with those which did not produce 
an ApoE4 protein, they concluded that it was the mere presence of the ApoE4 protein that was causing brain damage. Then they applied a genetic structure corrector, which eliminated the signs of Alzheimer's. The researchers are now working with the pharmaceutical industry to improve the compounds so that they can be tested on human patients. Uh, the exp uh, this experiment is particularly significant because it took place in human cells. Uh, Yadong Wang, who led the study, yes, that's his real name, Yadong Wang, uh, which is published in Nature Medicine, said, drug development for Alzheimer's disease has been largely a disappointment over the last 10 years. Many drugs work beautifully in a mouse model but so far they've all failed in human clinical trials. One concern within the field has been how poorly these mouse models really mimic human disease. Huang and his colleagues sent straight for human brain cells rather than um, traditional mouse trial because they realized the presence of the ApoE4 gene does not change the production of amyloid beta in a mouse brain makes sense. If you can't get the same reaction, your testing is invalid for whatever you're looking for if it's not a human brain. Now, last month, senior British scientists predicted that within the next few decades, Alzheimer sufferers will be able to live with the disease without the devastating symptoms. I'm hoping that it comes sooner than that. I have witnessed far too many people and see it still uh, in, in my present day life that suffer from this and it's always horrific to watch the deterioration. Now we didn't make it uh, as far as we wanted to tonight. Well, I did, I did want to talk about China folding some concessions on the economic front to Trump, but we'll get to that another night. Uh, reminder, Jesse's POV is coming up next. Then you get a one hour break and then America off the rails with Rowdy Rick Robinson only right here on KLRN Radio. Folks, I'm your friend and your host, The Grouch. If you like the show, tell your friends. If they like the show, you need new ones. But they and you are welcome every week right here with me on KLRN Radio for the Conservative Curmudgeon Show. Peace and God bless. We believe in the American way and we built this country called the USA and we fly our flag because we're proud and free. We're Americans. Red, white, and blue is our way of life. We never back down from a challenge or a fight. Nature provides, God gives the right.